Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick, and this is another Kerbal Space Adventures. So uh, I've, I've been down a little bit due to uh, some technical difficulties, but we're back. And uh, today I'm going to show you uh, uh, a, sh a plane I built in the downtime. Sort of a uh, glider. It's actually an ultralight glider. And it's really cool, and I like it a lot. Uh, the reason I like it a lot is because I've implemented some of the new .20 parts into it. As you can see when I bring it up here. Um, it does not have a command module, just a command seat. Um, it's got some RCS fuel for ballast and some wings. It's very, very simple, very, very light. It's got a rover core and a avionics package and several gear bays. Now, they're all useful. Um... And, and you, you know, I need them all at different points in the flight. Uh, and it actually lands on that front frontwards uh, reverse triangle configuration. It's really cool and very stable. And the whole plane is actually built on um, the base uh, body of the plane is three one by one structural panels. That's it. Uh, that's actually the first pieces I started with. So uh, let's let's go ahead and get this bad boy on the runway. As you can see, it it. Uh, doesn't come with a Kerbal. You have to man manually load your own Kerbal. Uh, so what uh, what you got to do is just park it on the runway, set the brakes, and go pick up a Kerbal. Now, one thing I did read about the upcoming uh, .21 patch is that uh, they are revamping a lot of things. One of the things they're revamping is the Space Center. Uh, apparently, this this whole predetermined graphic here of the space center is going to go away, and they're going to actually integrate the space center into, I guess, the the game already. So, uh, when you're looking down at the space center, I guess the scenery that you see will be the scenery that loads up, and uh, they say that it will be a quicker transfer from, you know, the space center to f actual flight which, you know, we have to deal with this loading time after the vehicle assembly building and, and whatnot. So let's just get this Kerbal here and we can wave at the .20 parts rover as we fly past it, doing like Mach 50 in my ghetto rover. I love this rover. It's just, just like a one-man rover, but it, it never crashes. Never flips. I guess I could have put a bigger cabin on it, but anyway, let's get our Kerbal out of here. Who do we got? Is this Inning? I think this is Inning Kerman. And um, the way you load your Kerbal is uh, you just tuck them up into the little wing slot here and uh, load. I uh, That's one thing I like about the command seat. It's got a range uh, that you can select that you don't have to have a Kerbal like right on top of it like you would to enter a uh, capsule or anything. But uh, once your Kerbal's in, just uh, pop this... Pop the gears up, and uh, we're ready to launch the engines and go. Now, this uh, these two jet engines uh, will get this l tiny little craft going so fast. Uh, I have not tried putting uh, rocket fuel engines on it yet, and rocket engines, but I imagine I could. Now, it takes off on a dime. Just love it. Uh, you, you do need SAS during all powered flight and especially takeoff. And then once you take off, you're going to need to trim down because the nose is going to want to come up. Uh, for those of you that don't know trim, you hold the alt key and press the direction you want to trim in. So uh, I'm trimming the nose down and, and got it locked in here so I can start climbing. I think this would be a, probably a good time to take a screenshot. So um, let me see here. Can figure that out. Looks like Innings uh, enjoying himself, <laughs> flying on the outside of an ultralight. All right, let's get my screenshot here. I think maybe if we do something like from the side. Uh, yeah, maybe. Whatever I take, it's got to be quick because this vehicle has a max altitude of about seventeen thousand meters before it will flame out. And uh, I've had it going about 1,400 meters per second before. All right, th that's good enough. We'll just take it right there. Um, it, will, it will go 1,400 meters per second, but you've got to be on the trim. It will constantly want to raise or drop. It's really hard to find that sweet spot. See, let me see if I can dial it in here. And then there, ah, atmospheric effects. 
Beautiful. Oh, losing the nose, losing the nose, lose. Ah, oh, we lost the nose. Well, the good thing about this plane is it it's a glider, and uh, all we gotta do is get rid of these engines here. Let me try and stabilize it. All right. You know what? Screw it. Let's blast these bad boys. Here we go. Ah. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Now, as you can see, it snapped right into place as soon as I let go of the engines. And uh, I have turned off SAS and just controlling it as normal, like a, like a normal flight. It is very, very stable. Um, it, it's twitchy, though. Any tiny little tap will uh, be a very large movement on the ship. But uh, once you've gotten to where you want to go, uh, it's basically just doing the whoop-de-whoops with a glider. And uh, I can fly it in times four speed, which uh, is a lot of fun. Um, but that, that leads me to my next topic, the, uh, the unlimited glider or the uh, infinity gliders that everybody's talking about. I really haven't heard anybody discuss a situation of why it's happening. Um, I definitely think it's these control flaps. Uh, these control flaps here add momentum. Now, I discovered this doing uh, during building of this aircraft. I discovered it during a flaps test. While on the ground, the ship started to move. And then it really started to move a lot. And then it picked up enough velocity to actually take off on its own with absolutely no power. So uh, I assume the glitch in the code is somewhere in the... Uh, uh, in, in those. Let's do a little loop here. See, this vehicle is very, very stable. Now, I, <laughs> here's my... The, the ultralight glider. We, we've already got one parked there because I did a practice flight. That's right. Practice flight. Now, as you can see, it lands on the uh, f forward uh, reverse triangle configuration and comes to a beautiful stop. I love this ship. It's very stable, and even if the wing starts, if it pitches and it lands with its uh, wing, that wing gear bay on the ground, it'll just land straight and roll as it does. But here, let me show you this um, uh, Infinity Glider propulsion here. Um, see, as you get a little bit of momentum going, keep an eye on my speed. It's increasing, and it increases... It seems to be exponential, but uh, it, I think it has to do with the weight of your vehicle. Um, but uh, there's my, my my test run, and my how's that for accuracy, huh? Um, well, here I will tell you what. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and get both these planes back to the uh, back to the space plane hangar, and uh, we'll do that. So to avoid uh, you guys having to listen to me talk while I fat my way around uh, the ocean, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into a musical interlude. So enjoy.
All right, we made it. Well, one of us did. It, uh, I uh, totally lost a Kerbal back there. <laughs> he uh, he bit it in in like the first whoop de woo. Did a total nose dive into the ground. Lost lost the Kerbal. Ship broke up. It was a total loss. But as you can see, inning Kerming made it. The the original uh, one too, or I mean the uh, the one from the mission here, not my practice run. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just park this over here by the 2.0 rover, and uh, we can kind of make this a little Hall of Fame area. Um, I really appreciate it, everybody watching. Um, I do do uh, appreciate when you like and when you subscribe. Um, uh, and all comments uh, and questions are totally appreciated. I'm actually going to put a download link up in this uh description so if you want to download and fly the ship you can it, it's on all basic 2.0 parts and uh that's basically uh no mods needed to fly it so fly it and enjoy so until nick whoa whoa it looks like uh my point to a rover is going to be a mom it laid its eggs so until next time fly safe <laughs>